railway crossings have an important figure associated with them. Important enough that it is how a crossing can be described. It is a key factor in the layout and footprint of a junction design. This figure is the crossing angle. Welcome to this video from the P-Way Engineer. In this video, we will be looking at crossing angles and why they are so important. You can expect to learn what we mean when we say crossing angle, how crossing angles are expressed, the difference between the intersection point and the crossing nose, and how we determine the crossing angle out on site. We welcome your thoughts, experiences and questions, so pop them in the comments. We are especially interested in if things are different in your country or region. Also don't forget to give that subscribe button a click. Perfect, let's get to it. The crossing angle is a critical geometric parameter that in simple terms is used to describe the angle at which the two running rails cross one another at the crossing. We have already seen that this angle is important when determining if a crossing is of the common or obtuse type. Rather than be expressed as an exact angle in degrees, crossing angles are expressed in the form of a ratio, 1 in n. So for example a 1 in 8 crossing would have a gap of 1 meter between the running edges of the rails, 8 meters back from the intersection point. The larger the number, the shallower the crossing angle. The intersection point, or IP is the point where the lines we place over our running lines cross. However, it would be both impossible to manufacture a crossing with a nose this fine, and also impractical, given it would break easily due to being so thin. As you can see from the picture the crossing nose is blunt. A crossing nose is normally 16 mm wide at this point. This allows it to perform its function while also being constructible and maintainable. The true mathematical intersection point can be found using the crossing angle. The intersection point is a distance 16 times the crossing angle in front of the crossing nose. The crossing angle is important, as along with the switch length and radius, it determines the overall footprint of the S and C layout. It also feeds into the speed that trains can be allowed to pass over a junction, an important factor in the overall performance of the railway. The shallower, or flatter, the crossing angle the faster the speed that can be attained across it. However, this then requires longer switches with larger turnout radius which in turn increases the overall size. On a new build railway, a track design engineer may have the luxury of being able to pick any size of switch and crossing combination to suit the speed and operational profile they have been remitted to deliver. However when upgrading existing layouts, often with a view to modernize them, space can be at a premium. This can lead to an exercise in trying different crossing angles and switch lengths in the area, to see what can be achieved. Before we jump into the next section of the video and look at how we find out a crossing angle, can I ask if you are enjoying this video to hit the subscribe button. We have loads of great content in the pipeline that you won't want to miss out on. Thank you. So if we are on site, looking at a crossing, how do we determine the crossing angle? The first port of call should be to inspect the crossing all over. It is usual to have the crossing angle on the crossing somewhere. In a fabricated crossing, it is often on the blocks used for construction. On a cast crossing, the angle is normally noted on the side, along with other details, including a unique number for that casting. If for some reason, the angle cannot be found on the crossing anywhere, it can be determined on site by measuring. There are a number of ways to obtain the crossing angle by measuring, with each country having a preferred method. Some rely on the use of the intersection point, which is not always practical on site. 
It is important to remember that the crossing angle is a ratio, which is the same along the length of the crossing. So, we take a measurement between the running edges behind the V, and find where the edges are 50 mm apart, and mark that point. Then we need to find the point where the edges are 150 mm apart, and mark there also. Then we measure the distance between the two points, down the center line of the crossing and remembering to use millimeters still. The distance between the two marks is then divided by the change in the spread of the crossing legs, in this case 100 mm. For this example, let's say that the distance in between our two marks, x, is 1075 mm. The change in spread of the legs is 100 mm. 1075 divided by 100 gives us 10.75. Therefore this crossing has an angle of 1 in 10.75. This method works well if the places the measurements are taken on the crossing need to be tweaked for some reason. For example if the edge-to-edge -edge measurement is taken at 150 mm and 250 mm. It can also be used when the measurements are taken in inches. So, that brings us to the end of this video on crossing angles. We hope you found this video informative and helpful in understanding what a crossing angle is, how they are expressed and how you could work out the angle of a crossing if you ever had to. If you have any further questions or would like to share your own experiences, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more railway engineering content.